Hi, I'm Robbie Fraser and I'm going to be reading from 192 miles with Carla. I'm going to kick off with Carla. Uh, it's a poem about um, identity and how we judge each other. 192 miles with Carla. I put my signboard in the back seat and we tack through the fleet of trucks in the parking lot and onto the hot open road. Where are you going? Should ask. Lips and beef jerky. I'm Carla. Her jaw, blade straight, softened in powder. She looked dry. Her earring swinging, one-handed. Her face was smooth and pale, no hair. Her colours borrowed from elsewhere. She smelled of meat and sweet freesias. Pleased to meet you, she said, her voice scrunching under wheels. You look like you need a ride and I need to hide myself from sleep, you see. She drove in bare feet. Hun, get me a cigarette, she pointed. I rummaged around and found a penis in a jar. Oh, right, she said, that's weird, I know, but that's the worst I have to show you. It used to be mine, she said. It's in a jar, I said. I had nowhere else to put it. Silent, we slid northwest. The sun, the color of a two bar heater, switched off and still warm, taking me back to distant days, huddled in layers of endless tea and jazz in my foggy room. The window's gap sucked on her cigarette, licking it clean of ash, blushing the tip. She smoked like she knew what she was about. The hairs on her left arm were vermilion, soon to be lost to the door's shadow. What are you going to do, Carla, when we get there? I recognised her expression. I'd once told my nana I'd lost a friend to a rival, and her eyes and mouth showed me there's worse to come. Get used to it. Carla treated her hair like a sleepy toddler, slung this way and that, stroked and tolerated. But her eyes, hazel, were made for the haze of a long, long road. She seemed to have no edges. I'm throwing it from the golden gate, she said. I rested my hand on her shoulder, the strap of her top under my fingers. We drove into orange darkness. Next poem um, is about dealing with the monsters in your life, um, but it's also about catching a dogfish. It's called Meeting a Monster in Anglesey. My boots are wet and yellow with lamplight, and my rod's tip sways with the surf's breathing, sucking in shingles again and holding, holding, Sea and light rain gathers, clinging to each rod ring. Then bang, the drops scatter. I heave back to meet him. From a hundred yards into his black, he meets me. This is a private union, quiet, unnoticed, without witnesses. I stand and I walk with my monster, feeling his sauntering tail swipes. In time, the rain becomes heavy, beating cold onto my skull, hair flat as mud. I tow him in and over the rolling rocks. A monster he is, a leg-length torpedo with black spots blotting his sandpaper skin. I lift him by the throat. He resists arrest. His heft, bigger than my father's clenched arm, rages against me. Legless with blind eyes, killer of his own kind, he writhes like a drunk twists my line around himself. All right, I say, all right, all right. He quietens. Wrapped in wire and thread, he stills, his gills still panting. Open wide, he lets me in. His teeth are a mountain range of trouble, but for me, just a view from above. The hook easily yields, and I stand again. My knees are cold and soaked. Pebbles cling on. Here we are, together, both waiting for me to move, with my left hand on the base of his tail, my right under his neck. I walk him headfirst to the sea. For a second he hesitates, then slips off without a word. Doesn't even look back. All right, I say. All right. All right. This um, next poem uh, occurred to me while I was um, flying over Iowa um, and it's man-made landscape. 
Uh, and I was struck by, you know, how, how people's emotions and decisions from generations ago can uh, be manifested in the actual shape of the fields today. Um, so it's our, our relationships in the, in, the, in the form of land. Flying over Iowa. On my left are grids on grids on the bones of thefts and dusty handshakes. Corn, 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 clover, corn, wheat, rye, corn, corn, some green, some brown, some fly blown by run down, ran out of town homes. Some lines are not drawn by a cold hand, but by another's, a god of one or another color. And now a river, caged a thousand times, sprouting varicose veins of wooded brooks, nonplussed, a slow fuck you flow. Upstream, it stemmed, yet fattens, loosens its belt. A farm and newborn barn top its body like a baseball cap. Some lines are dented. Strings tugged and fingered off centre by fights, drunken nights and graves of wet red mud. From 30,000 feet, I gaze slant into silent meals of potato peels and barley, sullen sex on horse skin and hauntings of a wizened ex reeking still, all gone now. Made modern in chlorophyll, dust and rusting steel. Um, the next one is about a, a woman and a flag. I, I've read that the Syrian flag is based on um, dynasties. Uh, so the, the reds and the greens and the blacks um, all symbolize people, tribes of people. And I was struck by the, the tragedy of that really, considering today's uh, situation. This is about a, a mother who's a refugee in England. It's called The Flower Eating Girl. There's something under the pine. I think it's feeding, sounds of teeth. My torch rings her in pillowcase white, waterboards her flat against a blue black night. She's nine or 10, a pajama suit of mud, sticks, leaves, slapped by light. Her hair is clumped, wool weighed down with jewels of earth, she wears a necklace of seven blue tit hides strung by the neck. I notice petals of jasmine, five or so, circling her mouth, a milkshake moustache. Her eyes, two green stars in the white, closed. Distant snap, twigs, gone. That first summer, I made salads. Artichoke hearts, romaine lettuce, plum tomatoes, stuffed olives, feta cheese, Zatar, my own, with less sumac for my girl. Skin thin sliced onion, hardly any red left to see, and mint. Jasmine flowers, reds, greens, white on a black plate, to the side some dates in a bowl for sweet. One morning, some cheese had gone. That was all. Those days were long and heavy, they breathed in all the light till bursting, and let it out in short gasps of night to leave folding, flattened, ruinations of food, the colours melding into the browning of summer. The herbs dried up, mint weakened like old soldiers. I had little hope for the father beans. Was it the cumin, the parsley, the too many lemons? Whatever, not even the crows bothered. Later, I thought olive oil would prevent freezing. It did, and I smoothed my hummus, hoping for footprints at dawn. None came, not even a dew-filled fingered furrow. I'd frozen some jasmine to use. The petals were flat against the rim, bruised an old bandage white. The minutiae bread perished in the night. <clears throat> some hope then. Fourth summer now, smile lines, she called them, giggling as she counted, ecstatic when shushed, tears wetting her black hair. There are more now, around the eyes, 
deeper great crevices, their valley bottoms slightly lighter than the peaks when I stretch them out. She'd be 12 now, the flower eating girl, turning her mind to fruits and seeds. I had a dream. The roses, the hybrid teas, the vainglorious pompous baubles had gone all in one night, all down the street, heads plucked clean of colour, bald with emerald ruffs to be chilled by England. But it was winter. I woke in darkness. The roses a long way off. I ease my two fat hips downstairs to find my house bathed in the smell of damp English soil. Okay. <clears throat> the um, next poem <laughs> uh, describes a, 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 a middle-aged man trapped in um, a life uh, that he hates and a career that he hates but doesn't know how to leave. Um, I wrote this in Sestina, uh, in a Sestina format, because I wanted to imprison him. Um, you might know that the Sestina form is incredibly rigid. It's, um, it's actually really difficult to write. Um, uh, for example, you, you, you can only use the same six words at the end of lines. They have to be in a particular order. Um, the, the final two lines are even more prescribed. Uh, and, and rigid. Um, I wanted the character to escape it, uh, uh, but he can only do so by kind of going within himself and then disappearing into fantasy. This is called Eat It With Skin Fat. <clears throat> Ladies, gentlemen, bankers, lawyers, fat cats, interlopers, I have in my hand a map a route, your prize for fighting the tutting heft of crowds, the dark, to be here. Tonight, you'll meet good people who, like you, carry the weight of questions of wealth, your income, tax, the questions you can't ask outside this room because fat profits, a reward for risk, offends the people out there who judge anyone not living hand to mouth or calling for change from the dark or spending their lives on beer and fighting. No. Not here. This is our freedom fighting, lighting the way for you. Questions will be heard without judgment, free from dark looks, quips, covetous creeping. No, the fat controller does not live here, nor does his hand stay the scale. No, we are good people. <sighs> but Christ, I'm jaded, stony. These people make me sick. Look at them. Polite fighting over booze to schmooze with stem holding hands with pinky rings clinking on glass. Questions about schooling and drooling over fat ass nannies who tuck them up in the dark. Am I to spend my nights awake in dark shadows at the wall of sleep while people I'm forced to know and those I lost grow fat and low? to hate the daylight fighting to arrive? No, I can't without question submit to this. I have to take your hand and sweep up both drinks in one upturned hand, lick salt off the rim, smoke away this dark. My head's sweat dries, salt crusts crack with questions. We walk dripping streets, salty night people, taste smoke on tongues and fuck after fighting, then feast on meat and eat it with skin fat. I catch your question between our cupped hands, then lick supper's fat from lips in the dark, while shh, people outside are still fighting. Okay, and um, this one is uh, a bit of fun. It's called the, Bad the Ballad of Dublin Chrissy, uh, about my mother. <laughs> That's in Little Fishes, said the mother to her daughter, drying dishes at her hip. You know you really ought to quit the dreams of theatre or singing Doris Day, but no, you prance about all night 
busy making hay and preen yourself with lipstick like some ladies of the night. To get yourself a decent man, you'll need to look all right. No, said Chrissy, cheeks burning through the rouge. I'm going to be a dancer and there's nothing you can do. You're working in a factory and this house ain't Confucian. So what the feck are you thinking? Buy me elocution. The rain in Spain can piss it down. Refined? You're out of luck. Daddy owns the Jaguar. He drives a bloody truck. Enter Prince and Pauper, a nod desirous brace. Young lady, said the Prince, you need to know your place. Yours is not the world of art, of music. Do not clamour for schools of books, libraries, the writers, country manor. Your family is not landed, nor has it any trade. You say you're in construction, but your tar is freshly laid, black as the stout that cooled it. Of that, I have no doubt. In my world, you play the game. I'm in, but you are out. There is no need to stretch yourself, to feed and clothe your zoo. Why learn words you'll never hear? Why three when one will do? The pauper punched the prince and said, you puffed up little prick. She doesn't want to be like you. Being poor don't mean you're thick. She likes it here. This life's secure. She wants not name or land. That's not her wish. I know that's true. I'm best to take her hand. She does not need your writing, learning highfalutin ways, your croquet lawns and garden parties, pheasant shooting days. Not for her, your cordon bleu, your poncy French frog's legs. She's happy with few words to use and sticks to chips and eggs. Hello, boys, said she. Extending claws and hackles, I have some news for you. Although you want me shackled to house and sink and kids and hop and mop and soap and bucket. But if my dreams are of custard creams, no, I say fuck it. I've filled my head while baking bread and stacking baking tins. I've realised there's more to life than tea and ginger thins. To you, dear prince, you seem to think position gives you truth. But your place on the shelves of life has naught to do with you. But more about the satin sheets, silver spoons and honey, the salad days and wanton ways of parents with old money. I don't heed the words of one whose only great achievement is inheriting his wealth by dint of some bereavement. As for you, dear pauper, I want more than your protection. I've learned more words than one. I have scribed my resurrection. You're right. I should not use three words when only one will do. I use more, a hundred more, of love, of heat, of truth. They'll be florid, torrid, wild and sharp, risky, zesty, hot. They'll burn right through your cardigan and tie you up in knots. My dots are joined, my edges blur. I'm burst but coloured in. I'm more diffuse but more defined, a palette wrapped in skin. I'll heat my days in rays of sun cut through by Blake and Spender. No more beige pyjama sales upstairs at Marks and Spencer. This is me. I know my path. My wings are all unfurled. I'm flying high above the place that used to be my world. It's just the same, except I see, instead of gilded cages, a sea of thoughts I'll never cross. The vessels of the sages. Okay. Um, the next two are about endings, because um, coming to the end. One ending is before and the other after. This is called The Slow Collapse to Rain. Ah, and there it is. The Slow Collapse to Rain. I turn from the window, my tea now cold, his irises clouded, skin a membrane. Sheets, milk white, hard, tight, shroud him, jackknifed, old. Used to make me sit in his TV throne, fed me marshmallows and pate on bread, talked of strong women of Athens or Rome. I turned to the glass, cars, wipers, bowed heads. I touched our condensed breath, a drop blooms, outnumbered it gorges, fattens, falls. Later, when crocuses have come and gone, his shed, tea bags, clear milk, and overalls. Hauntings of compost, torn half open, spill onto crush, crusted gloves and mouldering sill. This next one uh, I didn't read the other night because I have to be in the right frame of mind. Uh, it's called And the Three Days That Followed. I wake up and so does it. 
coiling hard, pulling down my second breath. I stare at the glass by the bed, the curtains, the wall, just there, dust painted in. The sun is up. It hasn't been told. The moment I hear cars outside, it is done. Last night is closed for business. Move on. My wife stirs. Please sleep. Grow old. And here's a dog sniffing, crisscrossing, solitary. Its coat as black as rock pool jet and soaked in salt hangs in sandy locks under its ragamuffin head. And then he's gone, drawn to another far off place. I stop at the pool, brine so clear, I can't tell where it ends and starts. The elemental line is gone, all still. Its dumb house oblivious to the chaos that once spewed and sucked and chucked again. Crystalline, snail tracks cross in another time. Hermit crabs and blennies begin their shy shopping. Anemones, skittish and forgetful, relax and their morning begins for the second time. I always liked this wood, deeper than ours, older somehow. I cut the flowers, most now fit for the cut grass pile, and she st sits gazing through the leaves. Ah, just now staring at the fire. Caught unawares, not in our yesterdays or my tomorrows, but another place between, the place where children play on that razor's edge. Now, in the silent space where thoughts are left to fall and settle in quiet piles, and words sit mute, unclaimed. Here is where I meet you. Here is where we are. Here it is. Um, and to finish, I'm going to uh, take you to the Yorkshire farmhouse in the rain. Uh, this is called Crunching on Bones. She saw me looking at her, looking at his mud on the slurp floor of the kitchen as he filled the room with oil skin back and black wet hair. But she looked away before my breath turned out to in and then she winged his grouse as he pissed like a horse above our heads and we took care of ourselves, which is what he wants, not that he said anything. Words in here are scraps to fling and swallow whole, but not too much as that's too much. She's still in there, I said. The you, like you said. So I can do what you said if you want to, I said. And he ate it down, dots and dashes and commas and all. And all I got was a glottal stop and I, and I say I too, and head back down to suck the thinnest of bones and even eat the crunchy ends so nothing's wasted, which is what he wants, you see. And I do. I do. All right, that's it. Thank you.